As teachers, sometimes you have students that you connect with naturally. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. But sometimes that connection can be challenging or not even materialize at all. Well, pertaining to Mr. Harris, I can honestly say that we absolutely had no connection whatsoever. <laughs> At least initially, at least initially. I think, I think he was in my home room last year, but don't call me on that. I had this quiet, floppy-haired, red-headed kid who would stroll in right before the bell and he would never say a word. But my home room is full of like loud, boisterous, rambunctious kids that dominate the, the conversation. And none of them who were being honored tonight, by the way. So I never paid much attention to who I think was Mr. Harris. Fast forward to this year. I get my seventh grade roster. I see Mr. Harris's name on it. So I go to a seventh grade English teacher and I ask, give me a preview of this Harris kid. All she said was, you're really lucky. And from that point on, from that point on, it didn't take long to get it clear. Sure, he dominated the first few tests and clearly showed how intelligent he is. But I want to mention briefly some of the other aspects of him that really made me respect him and really like to be around. First, he's got a confidence and composure that stand out. I know that look when he struts into class when he's ready to take a test and he knows he's about to kill. Here's something else that stands out. Many eighth grade boys are really scared to sh and, and really shy to like come up and, and talk to an adult or a teacher, especially when there are other guys around, other, other classmates around. I've always appreciated that Mr. Harris is not afraid to converse with teachers and me in the halls. Whether it's my asking, what you do this weekend? Or how was the quiz? He always will come up and take time to stop to speak. A trait that shows his composure. He also has a great sense of humor and he doesn't take himself too seriously. Mr. Harris came to the US via a brief stint in Germany and then he also came from Oxford, Mississippi. And I enjoy asking him, now is that how they did it in Oxford? Or did they do it that way in Germany? But he always just laughs and he never thinks that written person. He also is an NUS social media star. Just last week, he won the lower school trigon tournament and was featured. But my favorite post had to be earlier last semester when Toolbox Susie was featured on the school's Instagram page. And one of the slides had Mr. Harris sitting there grinning with an iron in his hand, iron in clothes. And eighth grade. <laughs> Front of his classmates, ironing his clothes. He definitely doesn't take himself too seriously. It's a pretty cool trick. He also is the only student in the last decade that I've taught that still writes in cursive. Few kids know or use that skill anymore, and I appreciate that he's keeping it alive. He also likes to hunt. He's a good lacrosse. He's a good tennis player. And he's even been nominated by his classmates for having some of the best hair in the grade. <laughs> oh, and he's an Auburn fan, so I definitely hope so. <laughs> I'll end with this, and it's something that I told him. One of the best compliments that I can personally give a young man is that I think we would be friends if we were classmates. And I know that, and I've told that to him. I know we'd be friends if we were the same age. So, Mr. Harris, thank you for making the U.S. a better place. You really have. I'm glad you came up from Oxford because you have made us better. Thanks for making my job easy. Your being having students like this makes being a teacher one of the best jobs you can have. We're blessed to have you. So congratulations on this great honor, and I really look forward to calling you a fellow.